Cool, here we go. Oh. Hello? Hi, um, I'm trying to get a hold of, I was trying to get a hold of Covington or uh, the CID department today, but I, I'm, it's my understanding they don't take phone calls, is that correct? That's correct. Okay, so, um, here's the deal, is I, I had this remittance that I would sent in, um, last year for like an HSBC, um, for a debt, and I, I, uh, I tried to create, um, a money order out of the, um, the bill that they had sent me. And uh, they just they completely ignored it, and then they sold my debt to um, a third-party collection agency without even like you know accepting my remittance or anything. And I, I created the money order out of the coupon like I was supposed to do and everything. So I was just I was trying to get a hold of some IRS agency today, or, or and then or figure out because I have another one that I'm trying to do for the court today, and I want to make sure that I do it right. Um, how does the how, how would I go about um, creating the money order? Because on uh, is, if, or maybe I can just read you off what I have here for for my the money order I have, and you can tell me if I'm missing any essential elements. Okay, all right. I want to make sure that I understand what it is that you're saying. You need to find out from me what information you need to put on the money order to ensure that it's credited to your account. Yes. And this is a debt to the Internal Revenue Service. No, it's actually a debt from um. A municipal, it's, it's from like a court, like I, I got like a speeding ticket, so I was just trying to discharge it. Okay, okay, so this is, do you understand, if, is this an IRS issue that you're calling a reference to? Yeah, yes it is. Okay, how is this an IRS issue? Are you calling again to get a refund information, I'm excuse me, to get account information to settle an IRS debt? Um, no. Okay. But I could do that as well, because actually I, I do have paperwork here for you guys that says uh, I didn't file a 1040 tax return. So I don't know if you guys say that I owe you money too. Maybe I could maybe we could do that at the same time. But, or you want to start there, and then maybe we can move on to the uh, money order issue. Because I'm going to need to know how to fill out the money order to, to, to discharge my debt for you guys too, because I think that I owe you guys money too, or that you're claiming that I do. May I have the social security number, sir, that's first on the return? Um... On the remittance that I have from you, on the on the bill of exchange I have from you guys, it's for um, let's see, Christopher Fleming. And the social security number that's first on the return. It's gonna be well, it says page one of four, and then it's got um my social without dashes, and then it has an extra three numbers after it. Okay. So. What year are we discussing? Oh, I haven't paid my federal income taxes for like seven years. It's been a long time since I've filed. Um, yeah. Okay, the social the social security number for the legal person is six. And then there's a zero one two after it. On on the paperwork that you guys sent me, it has an additional three three numbers. I need to ask you some questions. The question for me is to determine that you are indeed the person able to access this information. Mm -hmm. And please have the name or names as they appear on the return. Um, I don't. Is this a return that I have? It it just says Christopher Fleming. I don't know if this is a return. Um, I'm told that I was born on July 16th, 1986. I can't actually swear to that because I wasn't counting. I don't know, but that's the date my parents tell me I was born. Can I have your complete mailing address? Um, the mailing address is 1000 Golden Springs Drive. Thank you. I'm hearing that we have a contact area code and telephone number for you. It's 909-861-2201. Is that correct? No, it's not. It's no longer an accurate telephone number for you? No, it's not. I, I, I have to change it. I, get, I have, like, a lot of stalkers. I understand. What about 909-461-3282? No, I, I changed it, like, three times a year. It's um 909. Can, you ready to change it? Sure. All right. 909-839-3313. Oh, I'm not Mr. Fleming. Uh, my, my my mother named me Christopher. You can call me Chris or Christopher. I, I understand, but unfortunately...
Oh, my, my name's Christopher. I understand. Is this a cell phone or a home number that you can give to me, sir? Oh, that's my um, cell phone number. Okay, this is what I'm going to do at this time. I'm going to, I see that there's been a request for a portion, uh, uh, just someone needs to speak to you regarding this. So what I'm going to do at this time is to take this uh, opportunity to tr put you in place with someone who's going to assist you with answering your questions. And uh, unfortunately, this appears to be in collection. Um, if you guys can send me a, um, a statement to close the account, and then if you can just help me figure out what's up with the money order. Cause I, I, you, Mr. Fleming. I'm letting you uh, know. I'm not Mr. Fleming. I'm not Mr. Fleming. My, my, I understand. My mother named me Christopher. I'm of the Fleming family. That's That's my family name. You see. Okay, okay. I need to transfer you to someone to get the information that you need to close out the account for the year that you're, that for, to give you the information that you're requesting. Okay? Okay. I appreciate your patience. I'm going to transfer you over to them now. They should be on the phone in a very short period of time. I just waited 15 minutes, so please, you can't just... I do, and I'm going to go as fast as I can. Okay, cool. Okay. See, because... I was calling and trying to figure out how I can do the, how to do an acceptance on the, on another bill that I had, and she transferred me over to collections. Is this collections? Is this collections. Okay, so, um, are you going to be able to help me figure out how to create the money order to do the discharges, or are you only here to collect for the, the IRS debt? So what have I been waiting on hold for all day? I'm not sure because you never gave me a social. Okay. Um. Well, I have a Treasury Direct account number. That, that was that's that's on the paperwork that you guys have sent me, and it's um for the legal person Christopher Fleming, and his social security number is six one nine zero two after it on this paperwork. I don't know what that means. Then it also has a social security number with dashes, and that's six one nine dash. Zero seven. Are you with me? Six one nine. Yeah, with dashes in between. All right, and your relationship to him? Um, that's the legal person that I was given at birth. Um, when I was born, they gave me that person to conduct in commerce with. I'm the only authorized representative for that account. Like, I have full power of attorney for uh, Mr. Fleming. Did you fax that power of attorney into the IRS? Well, it's it's me. My mother named me Christopher, and I'm of the Fleming family. So, if, do you want me to send you my birth certificate, or? Okay, so you are Christopher Fleming. Is what you're telling? Um, I'm the authorized representative for that account. Like, I'm I'm not Christopher Fleming. I'm Christopher of the Fleming family. You see what I mean? Like Christopher Fleming isn't a man; it's a it's a legal fiction. It's like a person, it's a corporation that had been created for my benefit at my birth. So there would be there would be no one else who could call and and basically like be authorized to adjust or administrate this account. It's only me. <clears throat> but here's the thing: is I called today trying to figure out how to do the discharge because I have a I have a bill here that I tried to send in for HSBC because I had a motorcycle. And I tried to um, create a money order out of the out of the bill that they sent me, and I sent it in, you know, paid to the U.S. Treasury, and then I, I wrote it all out, authorized representative, and then I put my um, 
employee number or as you call it social security number or as I like to call it it's the treasury direct account number that I was given to discharge these debts and they completely ignored my remittance so it's like I I I don't know what I'm supposed to do. And if, if you guys can help me, if you, it, it, so you're saying that I'm in collections with you. So now you're saying that I owe the IRS money. How, how much do, how much does, how much does Christopher Fleming owe the IRS? What is Christopher Fleming's date of birth? Um, I'm told that uh, I was born on July 16th, 1986. I, I, I can't swear to that because I wasn't counting. I don't actually know the date that I was born. But my parents tell me that it was um, July 16th, 1986. And what is the address on record for Christopher Fleming? Um, uh, care of 1000 Golden Springs. Does Christopher Fleming have a contact number? Uh, yeah. I just changed it though. They, they, she, she uh, read me off like three old numbers that I used to have, so I gave her a new one. It's uh, 909 839 3313. And what type of number is that for Christopher Fleming? It's a cell phone number. Does Christopher Fleming have any other numbers that we can reach him at? Uh, no, just that's the only one right now. Okay. Is Christopher Fleming receiving income from any outside company? Um, no, I'm, I haven't been working for a long time. I'm, a, I'm on like a GR and welfare and I'm, I'm trying to get a disability right now. Okay. And are you banking anywhere? Um, no, there's no, there's no, there was an account that was open, but it was closed. That's what, that's what I'm trying to figure out is because I've been, I've been sending off these remittances and they've just been getting ignored. Like there's like four of them. I have like. So I don't know if, how I'm supposed to enforce these or if it's the CID. I can't even get a hold of anyone at the CID. And then when I called the IRS today, then I was getting somewhere with the last female I thought, but then she transferred me over to collections. So I, I need to learn. I need to. I need someone to uh, tell me how to actually fashion these money orders so that they'll go through. Or do I need to send it directly to the IRS? Do I send it to the bill? Do I send it to the creditor? Like, um, do you know how this stuff works at all? Is there, is, do you, do you know what I'm talking about? Yes, I think I'm aware of what you're talking about. Okay, so here's what I got on my thing. I put, uh, money order, order for money, and then I put, uh, pay to municipal services bureau, and then in the amount of, and then I leave it blank, right? And then I, I crossed out the amount due, and then I put my initials and authorized representative, and then, um, I put by Christopher Fleming, the all capital, and then I put authorized representative, and then I signed it. Like, I actually put my, my signature on there. And I said, uh, please adjust this account. And then on the back, when you flip it over, it says, uh, for deposit to U.S. Treasury, for credit to Municipal Services Bureau, for account number. And then I put, like, because on here it gave me, like, uh, a case number. So instead of, like, putting, like, if it was, like, a, like a bill for, like, a bank or something, like, instead of putting the account number, I just put the case number. Is that is that going to be... Is that going to work, or? So this is a money order that you're trying to fill out in the amount of how much? Well, uh, that's what I that's what I was calling about because like, there I was told that it's my understanding that we should just leave the amount blank because the CID the IRS CID division actually figures out they they like work out some kind of settlement or like they they discount the amount of the remittance. Because the the original amount that they say that Christopher Fleming owes is one thousand three hundred and thirty three dollars, so I crossed it out. Should I leave that on? Should I put in the amount of one thousand three hundred and thirty three? And do I send it back to the court, or do I send this into the IRS, and then the IRS will set off the account, or how does the discharge actually work? Because I I don't I'm, I'm it's kind of frustrating when I've sent out like four of these things already, and they're just all being ignored. Okay, and who gave you the discharge? Who who gave me the discharge? Yes. How did you go about getting the discharge? Um, I haven't done it yet. That's what I'm. That's what I'm trying to. That's what I'm trying to figure out. I have it. I have it right here in front of me. Like they sent me a bill. They sent. Well, not me. They sent the legal person, Christopher Fleming, a bill. So I got the bill, and then I wrote all this out on top of it. Because it's my understanding that we can just pay for all this stuff with our signature because there is no money. And you, you, I'm sure you know about all that, like HDR 192 and Public Law 7310, where you can't pay a debt with a debt, and basically the U.S. obligations are to 
set off or, or discharge any debt that comes to the straw man. So I have a, I have a, I have proof of a bill here for the all capital letter Christopher Fleming. So now I'm trying to set it off. But I'm just trying to figure out which is the proper way to do it. Do I send it to you guys? Do I send it to the court? Is is everything just from what I've told you? Does all the information that I need on here? Because it's my understanding that to be able to create the, or a negotiable instrument, all it has to have is a date for set off, an amount that's due, and then um, an acceptance. So basically, like if I tell them I'm accepting this presentment, right? Am I doing it all right? It looks like there might be some errors there. Now, what court is it that you're trying to send it to? It's for um, Municipal Services Bureau. It's, see, that's what I don't understand. It's for it's for a court that's in um, Southern California, but then they want me to send this remittance to some Municipal Services Bureau in Austin, Texas. So, But it's for Moreno Valley Court. It was just for like a speeding ticket or driving without a license. I don't remember what it was. Okay, so you're trying to pay a uh, traffic violation. Well, I'm trying to set it off, not pay, because if I was going to pay, I'd have to send them the Federal Reserve notes or give them a credit card number or something, you know? So I'm trying to set it off. But set it off with what? With my Treasury Direct account number. What's in the Treasury Direct account number? Um, well, it's my understanding that when I was born, Christopher, I was born the man. So what happened was there was an obligation because what happened is in 1933, they took and sold all the birth certificates to ensure the national debt because there was no money. There was, we were in debt. So they, so they said, what we're going to do is we're going to create this all capital letter straw man. It's, it's all in Roosevelt's uh, inaugurational speech where he goes through and basically says you can't pay a debt with a debt. So therefore, I have this bond that was created at my birth. It's my birth certificate. That's why your, my birth certificate was printed on bond paper because it, it is a bond. So that bond was sold to ensure the national debt. Well, when they did that, they said that uh, the Supreme Court said that our remedy was through HDR 192 that we may set off um, and discharge any public debt that comes to the all capital letter straw man name. So that's what, I'm, that's what I'm trying to do. And I've tried to do it on my own where I sent the remittance back into the company and they just ignore it flat out. They just, they, I mean, HSBC took, is, I sent them this remittance. So I don't know if they took my remittance and they cashed in on it and then they sold it again to a collection agency um, or if I if did it wrong, if I'm supposed to send it to the because there's people online who are saying that I'm supposed to send it to the IRS. So that's why I'm trying to call you guys and figure out, do, do I send it to Covington? Do I send it to the CID, the Criminal Investigations Department? Who does it go to? How, do, how, does this, how does this actually work is what I'm trying to figure out. Is Do I leave the amount blank? It's just like basic, just some basic questions I have. Okay. And when was the last time uh, Christopher Fleming filed a tax return? Um... It's been a long time. Okay. Did Christopher Fleming receive any income last year? No. Well, uh, n no, I don't think so. Not, not that it's taxable. I'm not, I'm not required to pay a, a income tax on my labor, anyways. So I need to send in a, a, a. Here's the other one. Does this go in with an IRS 1040ES form, or is it a 1040V? Do, do you know about how I do that? Do I need to send in the coupon with it? Do I send that directly to the creditor? Do I send that to the to the IRS? How does this? Can you tell me more about this process, please? I'm looking into it now. Let's see now, unemployment is taxable. Did, does Christopher Fleming know that? Um, I have no problem if you guys will send me a, a statement to close out the account for everything I owe you guys. If for everything the legal person Christopher Fleming owes you guys, then I. I will set off the amount. I, I will extend you guys the credit that you're requesting. If you if you send me a remittance or if you send me a statement, then I will I will re, I will send you guys the remittance, and I'll become the due holder in course. So what I don't understand is I'm, I've I become the due holder in course on this, and they just ignore it. So do I have to like? How do I enforce these things? Is is what I'm trying to figure out because they're just ignoring it, and I and I feel like they're just keeping all my all my all my. Uh, all my remittances, and it's totally unlawful. Like they have to. The law says that they can't refuse payment, and they're they're just refusing payment every time. So, or oh, they tell me they only accept cash or credit cards, and it's just like no, 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 it doesn't work that way. So I'm sitting here arguing with them back and forth, 
and it's not getting anywhere so it's just like I'm, I gotta that's why I'm trying to call you guys and figure out what I'm doing wrong because something's not working something's something's not right okay that's understandable all right the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is send you your w for Fleming's W2 information for the year 2009 and 2010. Employment is taxable, so to kind of help you offset the issue that you're having with everyone else, we're going to go ahead and issue those out. That way you can put them on a 1040 form. That way that you can show that you are fully compliant with the IRS. Oh, so like right now you guys are like saying like, I'm not even working with you, so why are you guys going to help me set off my debts and I won't even pay yours? Exactly, see, so. So you guys are upset because I haven't paid, because I haven't extended you guys credit, so now you won't pay off all my other remittances? Is that what's going on? That's, that's not the case at all. If you're a legal entity, you need to have order so that you can go ahead and move forward to the next issue. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and send that out to you now. Time on the account for you to go ahead and get those into us. I'll give you till uh, March, uh, February the 29th to go ahead and put those in the mail. And let me give you the address that that needs to go to. Okay. Let me know when you're ready. I'm ready. Top line is Internal Revenue Service. Internal Revenue Service? Yes. Second line is A like Alpha. Hold on one sec, my pen just drained out. Let me see if I can type it up. Hold on a second. Okay, internal turn. Service. Okay, and then the second line is A like alpha? Yes. Okay. B like Billy? B like Billy? C like Charlie. Oh, C like Charlie. S like soldier. S like soldier. S like soldier again. S. Alright, next word is stop, like the stop sign. Stop. Okay. Stop number is seven six. Mm -hmm. One zero one. One zero one. Third line is the P.O. box. Okay. And that's two four zero one seven. Okay. Bottom line is Fresno, California. Fresno, California. Nine three seven seven nine. Nine three seven seven nine. That's correct. Okay. And that's where you'll send those two thousand and two thousand two thousand nine and two thousand ten tax forms into businesses that you're trying to pay. Um, there is a debt here that's old, and you said if we sent you a state, that you'd be able to go ahead and extend the credit. Okay, and then, in, but in return, you told me that you guys would um, settle my remittances that I send to you for the, for in future for the future, correct? Every all of the municipal offices, you don't send those to us; you send those directly to them, and then if they need to process it further from us, then they would do it on there, and that would be on them to do. It will be no longer your issue once you send it to them. Okay, so then what happens when they ignore my remittance? When I send them, when I because they they look at me and they go, "You can't pay your your bills with your signature. Are you crazy?" Da, 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 da. So it's like, what do I say to them? Do I say, "Hey, listen, you need to contact the IRS, or you need to contact CID, or, or what do I say? Like, send that to. Am I putting the right wordage on here? Because on the back I put. Uh, for deposit to U.S. Treasury, for credit to Municipal Services Bureau, and then I put for the account number, and then I signed it, authorized representative, and then I put my employee number, uh, the Social Security number without dashes. So is that basically like everything I need on there, correct? And that's on the back, and then the front has paid to money order, and then in the amount of, and then I, I can leave that blank. Is that is that right as well? It, it, it doesn't have to have an amount. The IRS will be able to, the, or the CID is the one who figures all that out, right? What the actual amount is, so I'm, I'm okay just to leave it blank. Is that right? That's not your concern outside of them. You'll want to know how they're wanting to process it. Their system might be different from ours. So check with them to see how they're wanting to have that filled out. And I can tell you how ours need to be filled out. Okay, could you do that? So when I send in, so you're going to send me a bill from, from, or you're going to send me a statement, right, to close out the account that Christopher Fleming owes you guys. So I can, 
discharge that, and how how would I go about doing that? Are you guys going to send me a coupon? Like how? Because like normally they'll send a bill, and then there's like a little coupon you can detach at the bottom, and that's how I can make the money order, correct? Right. Yes, that's what we're looking into doing now, but one thing at a time, so that you don't get confused and be back here again. Okay. received notices from you guys it's just that I've, I've been in and out of jail all for the last you know three years so right, that's understandable the amounts that we're showing I can set it off if you send me a, a settlement. You send in the remittance however you want to. Yeah. That's the phrase. Okay, you'll be able to do that today. I, I, uh, today? What do you mean today? Within the 24-hour time frame that we're presently in. Um, unless you would have me a, a copy of the paperwork in front of me that I could sign off and create a money order. Does it need to have a stamp on it and stuff too? Do I need to put stamps on it? Because some people are saying that the IRS won't take it unless it has a, a stamp or something. Is that true? Right. A mailing stamp. So the postal service can mail it if that's how you're wanting to do. But I don't actually have to put a $1 stamp on the remittance itself. Now why would you have to do that? I don't know. There's, there's just a lot of disinformation floating around. That's why I wanted to give you guys a call and figure out what exactly is true and what's not. No, you don't have to put any stamps on any money orders. That's probably what's causing your processing issues. Hmm. Okay, so um, why would I need to have all that set in today? I'm asking if you can. Uh, I, I, I don't think that's going to be possible. But I, if you give me another month, like how you gave me on the other one, and if, if you give me till February 29th, then I'm sure that if, if as long as I can receive it within here, and then I can, I can write out all the uh, central elements it, and basically you've gone over with me and you told me that all the elements that I have here is correct where I basically create a money order out of the out of the coupon that and then put leave the amount blank okay I didn't say any, any of that we haven't even discussed that yet okay okay all right so let's just go step by step so how do I how do so how do you step want step would be best for you what I'll do is uh, just in case you're having issues with the other uh, entities that are trying to your remittances, I'll go ahead and allow until April the 1st uh, to go ahead and send in our remittance. The amount in the event that you had to wait all the way till April the 1st will be uh, $2,179.74. Um, you will get a letter from us showing that amount so that you can go ahead and process it according to what I'm going to tell you now. And as long as that comes through, you shouldn't have any further issues from us. No wage levies or bank levies, anything of that nature. What you need to put on the money order, it needs to be paid to the order of United States Treasury. Okay. Written out completely. That way we don't have any issues or fraudulent errors, anything of that nature. Okay. It needs to have Christopher Fleming's name and his address. And his address? And his address. Okay. It needs to have a daytime telephone number to contact him at in the event that we need to for whatever reason. Don't want to have any issues or delays. Okay. It needs to have his social security number or employee ID number or however you want to reference that. The number that you gave me is the number that we're looking for so nobody else can get credit for Christopher Fleming's remittance. Okay, and would I put that with dashes or without? You can put with dashes. That's preferable. Okay. All right. We need the tax year that we're looking at, which is 2006, and the tax form, which is 1040, as long as that's on the front, not on the back. The back is reserved for us in this particular case. Put that on the front as long as it's legible with the amount. That way we know what you're referencing. There shouldn't be a problem from there. 
So I get, so I, I get, I create the remittance and then I put the 1040. Is it a 1040 V? Is it a 1040 ES form? Which, which 1040 is it? I have to put it is 1040. The whole entire form or just that, just that part with the coupon? You can't put the whole entire form. You're just putting the numbers 1040. You don't have enough space for the entire form on the money order. Oh, so I'm just putting 1040 directly on the money order. Just the numbers 1040. Oh, I, oh, okay, I see. With the year 2006. Okay. Okay, cool. And we'll sort it through from there. You should be getting the uh, letter showing the amount like you requested within 7 to 10 days so that you can have that for your records. All right, cool. So you guys will actually send me proof that it was that it was discharged? Once it comes through, then yes, we'll go ahead and send that out to you as well. Do you know how long the it normally takes for the set-off to occur? No, it's case by case and the processing office, which is why we put your contact information. If there's anything unusual or any delay, they'll be the ones to let you know. You know what? I really appreciate all your help. Thank you so much. I just have one more um, thing, if you could help me with this. So when I get these bills from these creditors, I, I would fill it out hypothetically the same exact way, except I would just put the 1040 and then 2012 on the top of it? No. When or is that only when I'm dealing with IRS discharge? That's only when you're dealing with IRS. Everybody else's billing information may be slightly different. You'll want to ask them how they prefer to have it so that they can run it through their system. Not everybody's system is the same. Okay. So I just got to get in contact with them and, and figure out who's in charge in the financial department. And... Correct. And see what they're wanting from there. All right. Great. Thank you. What, what was your name? My name is Miss Lumpkin. Miss Lumpkin, you're amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's not a problem at all. All right, I love you. So I should be hearing from you guys within the next, um, you, you'll be sending that along pretty soon, right? Seven to ten days, correct. Great, great. All right, well, thank you. I really appreciate all your help. You're welcome. I'm glad to be of service to you. All right, I love you. Bye. Bye-bye. Yes! I told you guys I'm not crazy. You can pay your bills with your birth certificate. I told you guys.